calling the meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. And this is the regular meeting of the Township Council for the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal for the month of July, being, being Monday, July 22nd. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Deputy Mayor Deschamps, I Move. believe you have that motion. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor John Hunter that Municipal Council approves the agenda as amended with the removal of item 16 from the agenda. Thank you very much. Council, you've heard the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. The agenda is approved as amended. Item 16 is gone. Item number three on the agenda for tonight is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Are there any declarations this evening? None by me. No declarations. Proceeding to item four on the agenda. Item number four on the agenda is a delegation of presentation. Actually, it's a presentation by our community development coordinator, Wendy Van Jolen. So, Wendy, I'll let you go ahead with your presentation. Hello, Mayor and members of council. Um, I am here to present the Economic Development Strategy updates to top 10 priorities. So an Economic Development Strategy for the Township was prepared back in 2012 by McSweeney and Associates. More recently, in November of 2017, a review and update of the strategy was completed. The updated strategy includes what McSweeney and Associates believe should be the top 10 strategic priority economic development actions for our Township. In June, our Community Development Committee reviewed the 2017 document and top 10 priorities, and later at our July meeting, staff provided an update to CDC on each of the top 10 items. Now, as per the committee's request, I'd like to share those updates with you this evening. Um, first, I want to say being new to the team, I'm really impressed with the amount of work that's been done uh, from this list. You'll notice that with some of the items, the direction hasn't been followed literally, but the intent of the direction by Mixed Media and Associates is certainly reflected in the work that's been done so far. So we're going to get started with priority number one from Mixed Media and Associates. And it says, the township has been very successful in growing its industrial base. To continue this trend, the township needs to ensure they have an adequate amount of commercial and industrial sites that can accommodate new investments the township consider an undertaking an industrial or com commercial land strategy. That would include continuously review and, if necessary, update of Edwardsburg Cardinal's home-based business policies and bylaws to ensure that they are best in class and up to date with changes in home-based business requirements. Also creating an inventory of, an, of all industrial and commercial sites currently available for sale or lease in the township undertaking an assessment of the inventory to ensure it is sufficient to meet current and future investment demands and community needs, create a plan to address any shortcomings in required land, including any shortcomings in required servicing. So to date, there is no documented strategy. However, we know that our council and staff are continuously looking for opportunities to acquire or convert land for industrial use and we're going to touch more on this in priority number three. So priority number two is to develop policies to ensure proceeds from the sale of township-owned commercial or industrial land are being used to offset the cost of securing additional required commercial or industrial land, which will support the township's investment attraction efforts. <coughs> so great news, this is our current policy. Um, we do use the proceeds from the sale of township owned land towards the purchase of land. In fact, we have over $2 million in an industrial park reserve fund for this use. Um, just before we go on, mm -hmm. um, how did you want to handle this? Um, I think there were, Councillor Deschamp is the chair of the committee that saw this report. I think Councillor Dillabaugh was there. Uh, the other three of us have been there. Do you want the questions during the presentation or at the end? At the Community Development Committee, we paused after each priority and there was some discussion. We're certainly welcome to that, I'll warn you. The presentation lasted over an hour when we did it that way. So, uh, as, as the chair, I, I will leave it to you. <coughs> okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll just hold the questions till the end. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of discussion. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, 
Priority number three. A program that has proved very beneficial to Edwardsburg Cardinal in landing one of its largest investors uh, was the province of Ontario Investment Ready Certified Site. Select one of the township's highest priority commercial properties to apply for a province of Ontario Investment Ready Certified Site designation to ensure the township continues to be one of the provinces uh, on the province's list of communities with sites shovel ready for development. So a certified um, site designation uh, is issued to properties that have successfully completed a set of program requirements to demonstrate that the property is primed for development and ready for investment. A property with an investment ready certified site designation is attractive to investors and the site selectors because it provides important background information on your site's availability, utilities, transportation access, and environmental records. It encourages faster site selection decisions and can help greenfield or expansion projects get started. The investment ready certified site designation is valid for four years unless the property is sold or leased within that time. Uh, the township originally had 220 acres of land in our industrial park certified by the province as investment ready. The cost to complete the necessary studies and certify these lands was around $175,000, some of which, which was paid for with a grant from the province, and this designation was a key part of securing our sale to Giant Tiger. We currently have about eight acres of certified investment ready land in our industrial park. We had to recertify our remaining acres uh, in 2018, and this designation expires in 2022. The land is advertised on investinontario.com, and a new sign is in progress to market the land to possible investors. More recently, the township has responded to a request from the province for lands ready to be sold and used for the automotive industry called the Job Site Challenge. The majority, but not all, of the lands we've offered are owned by the province and will require an amendment to the county's official plan in order to be used for industrial purposes like auto manufacturing. CDC has discussed this topic at our main meeting. So Open for Business, a division of the Ministry of Economic Development, has reached out to our township to talk more about these lands. <laughs> Our mayor and CAO um, met with some members of Open for Business in Toronto earlier this month, and we know that the province has plans to create a more formal application process for their request. Priority number four is create an ongoing formal business visitation program. Start by generating a business directory to facilitate outreach. Meet the owners, learn about business operations, discuss any issues, opportunities, or barriers to business. Work with the business to determine if or how services available from the township can assist the businesses. So there is a business directory for Edwardsburg Cardinal available. It's organized and updated by the counties. There is a link to this directory on our website already. It's under the Economic Development tab. Let's also not forget our recent Meet Your Council event. It was hosted by the township where business owners had the opportunity to brainstorm and share needs with the councillors. Some topics included price increases for Todd signage, joint marketing or video opportunities, recognition and awards, and community events. Also, the counties are completing a business retention and expansion study for the area, including uh, 300 interviews with business owners, 16 of which are from our township. Um, we can expect the results from the study later this fall. Do you have that date? I don't think they have a date. They just said later this fall. No, I no. think, no, I did, we did get a save the date on that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, August 26th. Yes, I knew there was a date. Yeah, and I just don't think the other members of council have it. Excellent. And I think they might all want to note it in their calendars. Well, what was the date? August 26th. Yeah. In the morning. In the morning? <laughs> and what was the location? Mm -hmm. Maplehurst Manor, I believe. Yep. In the hospital. Maplehurst Couch. Maplehurst. Maplehurst. Maplehurst Manor is County Road 2 west of Brock, west of Prescott. Sorry, Wendy, but That's okay. yeah, I just wanted to make sure we got that as we went along. Yeah. Let's use this thing. 
So that's great news that there is more information coming and another opportunity to hear feedback from your business owners. Bird, what time? 9 a.m. So go ahead, Wendy. That's okay. I'm moving on to priority number five. The township has identified specific areas within the community that are subject to benefits of a community improvement plan. Enhance and expand these CIPs to include policies focusing on a brownfields redevelopment program. Considering a brownfield site can include properties that are abandoned, vacant, or underutilized properties where past actions have resulted in actual or perceived environmental contamination and or derelicts and or deteriorated buildings. This expansion to existing CIP policies could include site assessment grants, property tax assistance programs, <coughs> rehabilitation grants, etc. So there's currently two CIP programs in effect. The Cardinal CIP was brought into effect in January 2012. In December of 2013, Council adopted a similar plan for Spencerville. Both plans focus on the downtown core areas of these villages, and there have been no expansions to the program since. There are actually no brownfield sites in the township. Our CIP program does include, as the priority indicated, site assessments, property tax assistance, and property improvement um, grants, and more. Um, in 2018, only one CIP grant project was completed. The township paid $5,000 to Cardinals Totally Canine Pet Store towards having a roof replaced. Two applications are in progress. The township has committed $5,000 to remove stonework and install siding to a rental unit on Dundas Street in Cardinal. And CDC recently approved $1,700 to help Little Sisters Restaurant to install a front patio, so we're all looking forward to that. Um, there are $30,000 bud budgeted for CIP grants this year. Typically, all of the funds allocated to this program are not spent with fewer applicants than anticipated. So new brochures with program information have been created this year for distribution. Uh, they were available for the Meet Your Council event. Thank you. You guys have all seen these. <laughs> tourism efforts is to better coordinate tourism assets with the different events <coughs> to ensure maximum tourism spending in the community. The actions include completing a tourism asset inventory of market-ready tourism experiences in the area and connecting festival and event coordinators with businesses within the tourism asset inventory to ensure people attending the festivals and events have an opportunity to spend money at local businesses. So right now, we do not have a tourism asset inventory. Tourism recreation activities in the township are promoted through our community events calendar. The township supports tourism events through our community grants and donations program. And we also spend a small amount of dollars on tourism ads and visitor guides. Um, we purchase ads in the Prescott Journal, Reporter and Times, and uh, Chamber of Commerce Visitor Guide with our You Can Get There From Here message, and I have those ads as well. Yeah, I just thought you guys could. on of priority number seven. Continue expanding the township's communications marketing uh, programs, including building out the township's brand logo, community or economic development website, marketing materials, updating the new community profile, and continually updating investment attraction materials. Finally, add the Edwardsburg Cardinal Value Proposition, as well as a residential attraction program to the marketing program. We've done a few things here. We were at a trade show um, earlier this year. We've updated the trade show booth signage, which is here at the back of council chambers. Um, we recently updated our community information guide, which I think you guys have all seen before if you'd like them. Victoria, I know you've seen it. Yep. Thank you. 
So this was recently updated in time for the trade show that we are at. And our Johnstown Industrial Park signage was also recently updated as we sold a lot of the acres that were there when the sign was originally made. Um, our asset signage and street signs are being replaced this year with new branded signage and our 401 and 416 signage is also being replaced. Going to priority number eight. Continue working with local internet service providers and funding partners to help bring accessible, affordable, high-speed broadband to the entire township. This includes First, surveying the local business community to identify service delivery gaps, building a business case to provide to service providers, and taking advantage of larger regional initiatives aimed at addressing gaps in accessible, affordable, high-speed broadband service delivery. So the Eastern Ontario Regional Network is planning a project to close gaps in internet connectivity. Um, this is a $213 million project, and the federal and provincial governments have each committed $71 million towards the project. Also exciting, locally, recent announcements from Joe Computer are promising. Faster wireless internet is now available to many areas in the township. And additionally, the CRTC is expecting to issue an RFP for faster wired services to rural areas. <coughs> Priority number nine, continue working towards creating a united Edwardsburg Cardinal by undertaking a community development strategy process. Led by the mayor, the CDC, and the township CAO, undertake a holistic community <coughs> development strategy. The CDS should be based on community ideals valued by Edwardsburg Cardinal and should set a true community vision with priority actions for achieving the vision. Grounded through previous strategic planning efforts, official plan, economic development strategy, CIPs, etc. The CDS begins with a common community vision identifying how residents see the ideal future of Edwardsburg Cardinal. And as of right now, we do not currently have a community development strategy. Priority number 10, we've almost made it. Um, undertake a waterfront plan to explore and incorporate the best and most effective use of Edwardsburg Cardinal's waterfront. The plan should include aspects such as passive and active <coughs> development of the waterfront along the St. Lawrence, both private and public spaces, reuse and redevelopment of the Gallup Canal, access to the waterfront to accommodate activities such as diving, boating, fishing, as well as community gathering, public spaces for entertainment, etc. Active transportation linkages, incorporating east and west connections along the waterfront within and between Cardinal and Johnstown. <coughs> so the township has put some work into cleaning up our well-used waterfront and have removed much of the poisonous parsnip that's in the area. The county has paved some shoulders along Highway 2. We have a pavilion at Legion Park that is available for use. We continue to create and install new docks at the waterfront. However, financial constraints have prevented further development to the waterfront area. And that is priority number 10. Okay, questions? From the speaker. Everybody? Uh, yes. Um, just got a little bit to ask at the moment. Uh, Carrie, you just go, go, go ahead to somebody else. But I'll come, come back to me. I'm going to go to one that's kind of near and dear to my heart, which is priority number six. Uh, and I think the opening comment was we have no tourism inventory. Uh, and so I'm, uh, I guess my corporate memory is longer than most, but in for three years, and I can't remember the years, but I think they were something like 2010, 2011, 2012, we did have a Chamber of Commerce tourism initiative which inventoried all of the tourism assets in Edwardsburg, Cardinal, Augusta, and Prescott and presented them in a folder so the assets were all listed there. I don't know that, that they've changed that much. I think you're, we could probably find it in here and this is their visitor guide. 
Uh, what what is the year? What's the year of that? This is this year's. No, no, it won't be. The, oh. the, some of them will be there. Okay. But in the earlier uh, uh, versions of that visitor guide, which was an eight and a half by eleven guide, they were all very specifically uh, inventoried and described. So if you go back in those years, and I can't remember what years those were, you'll find that in the Big Big Ten, eleven, and twelve. Yeah. I think so. So that's one thing you might you might just to sort of get that, bring that to the fore again. Save you a lot of work. Yes. Because the the uh, the inventory that we did and the descriptors that we created were actually quite robust and with a lot of good picturing. Now, Cam, Councillor Cameron, did you get to where you were? Yes. Work? Yes. I just uh, <clears throat> just want to uh, question uh, regarding the continuous review, this is on the first page, priority one, <clears throat> continuous review and if necessary updated Woodsburg Cardinals home-based business policies and bylaws. Just, could I just have a little clarification on that? What would, be, what, what would have to change or what would have to be added? Sorry, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I guess McSweeney and Associates um, felt that we needed to update our policies around home-based businesses. I'm not sure if they meant um, in, in the zoning bylaw, like we could have a um, a home-based business, which I think are fairly liberal. Like a, a lot of we allow that in many of our zones. Yes, we do. That 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 that's. Mm -hmm. It just kind of strikes me as as strange. There, you know. We've got a suggestion here. Yeah, I think it's and okay for us to read this. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Yeah, it, it, well, all, all I was going to say is we've got a suggestion here that something needs to change. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to find out what needs to be changed. I think it's, oh, sorry, yeah. no, I just, uh, I just want to point out that the, the intent was to review the policies and update them if necessary. So if there were some, and, and to be honest with you, there are a few opportunities, perhaps, that people are missing, for example, in the uh, residential limited services zone, which is south of uh, Highway 2 along the river, yes. uh, where we don't really permit home-based businesses. And that's largely because they're on many of those properties are on private roads, and so those roads are not equipped to handle any additional traffic. Um, our upcoming comprehensive zoning bylaw review following the adoption of a new OP will be an ideal time to take a look at that and see if it's meeting the needs of the community. Okay, it's just I, you know, I'd hate to think that the Avon lady, or the Tupperware lady, or anything along those lines would be restricted. Because oh, I think the like I think the intent is quite the opposite. It's to make sure that we're very liberal in that. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to jump in here though, because on the other hand, in some ways, we're a little bit too liberal, and I think of a couple of businesses. Uh, in the residential zone in Johnstown, which have really taken the concept of a home-based business well beyond the home, well beyond the yard, and into the street. Yeah, and, and again, as I say, you know, following the adoption of the OP, that comprehensive zoning bylaw needs to be looked at, and that's the ideal time to make those changes. Thank you. Any other questions here? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. <clears throat> Thanks very much for getting it before your committee, and I hope that your committee will continue to work on this. Yes. All right, and so then I'm at item number five on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes of the June 24th meeting. Councillor Hunt. Myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, uh, the Council received and approved the minutes of the regular council meeting dated June 24, 2019. Okay, we'll deal with this first. Are there any errors or omissions in the minutes as presented? If not, I'm going to call a question on the receive and approve the minutes. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And now the next item on the agenda, we'll deal with business arising from those minutes, if any. Does anyone have any point of business arising? Hearing none, I'm about to move on to item number seven on the agenda. Item number seven on the agenda is the approval of various committee meetings that took place during the month.
first the public library board meeting of May the 28th. Councillor Cameron. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps that uh, Municipal Council receive the minutes of the public library board meeting dated May 28th, 2019. Thank you very much. The motion is on the table. Are there any questions? And with this one, I do have a question. Um, and I'll just point it out to Councillor Cameron. You're the council liaison with the library board. Correct. And so at item number six on the agenda, uh, a motion was made by the chair, T. East. T. East, yes. To appoint Donna Gladstone as the new CEO. So just draw to your attention that we have a rules of procedure and where rules of procedure are vague, we follow, I think it's Robert's rules of order, and chairs don't make motions. Oops. Uh, I, I, will br I will bring small that, point. I will I will bring that to their, to their attention. Okay, those in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. So now I'm at item number 7B, the Port Management Committee of June the 19th. Councillor Dillabaugh. Uh, moved by myself, second by uh, Councillor Cameron that the municipal council receives the minutes of the Port Management Committee meeting dated June 19th, 2019. Port minutes, questions if any? Hearing none, those in favor? carried. And then item number 7C, the Community Development Committee of July the 2nd, Councillor Deputy Mayor Deschamps. Yeah, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting dated July 2nd, 2019. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Minutes are up for discussion. If any, hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And then the 7D, the Committee of the Whole meeting, and then Finance, July the 8th, Councillor Hunter. And myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the municipal county receive and approve the minutes of the Committee of the Whole and then the Finance meeting dated July 8th, 2019. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Questions, if any? I'm just going to ask one, if I may, uh, to the CAO, if I may. Page 3 of 5. On page 3 of 5, we noted that the second quarter building report, there was an error there with uh, agricultural permits being captured within the industrial category. And uh, there was an explanation that there was some problem with the computer or whatever in the, in the production of that report. I'm just wondering if that has been solved and if we're going to be able to get an accurate or complete second quarter building report with those two categories separated. Uh, I, I will follow up with the uh, CBO, Mr. Mayor, I'm not, uh, not sure, to be honest, where is that with that? Thank you very much. Any, are there any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion, receive the minutes. Motion is carried. And item 7E on the agenda, Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities, meeting of July the 15th, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities, meeting dated July 15th, 2019. Um, the motion is on the floor. The minister up for discussion, if any. Questions? I have one. Uh, I think one. And that's on page... Actually, two. On page four of eight, do we have any kind of a better estimate of when we're going to see the docks installed? I know the concern was that the water levels are high and the current is high, but have we got a plan to get the docks in, 
into the water. Not that I'm aware of. Can we see if we can find some way of doing that? I will ask the uh, manager of facilities to uh, what his update is. I know he's reviewing it on a very regular basis to do it as soon as possible. Every time the water levels go down, it rains. I know, but uh, they're not going down much. But uh, uh, the second question, uh, I, I would appreciate a follow-up on that, but the second question, which is on page 2 of 8, and on page 2 of 8, we had the presentation by Mr. Baptista about this query fox um, software system. Do we not have already a similar system in place to do what this system was designed to do? We do, yeah. So we really wouldn't have much interest in participating in this beta program, would we? I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest taking on yet another software platform. Um, I think the software platform that we have for our asset management plan uh, adequately does this. We haven't made it available to the public and council, which is the added benefit of, of Query Fox. But it's not because it can't be done. It's just because staff is being very cautious to make sure we understand how it works and what the process mapping looks like before we make it available to, uh, to others. So. Um, Mr. Baptista's system looks very, very attractive, but I, as I say, I don't. I would not recommend taking on another software platform. As soon as you do, you've got all kinds of compatibility issues yeah. and duplication as well. Was Was Mr. Baptista aware when he made his presentation that we have a similar system? Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, because the one thing that certainly appealed to me about his presentation was the fact that council members would have access to the uh, the complaints that were being registered, how they were being followed up, the number of complaints, where they were originating, that kind of thing that council would have access. Um, have, have we got any kind of an idea as to when council might have similar access to the to the to the uh, equivalent system? I wouldn't expect it would be before the end of this calendar year. Um, you know, City Works is the is the module that we use to do that. And I'll be honest with you, um, staff is still working through the bylaw. Well, not so much the uh, the process mapping. So even with a bylaw enforcement matter, if we get a complaint and we put it in, there are still some there's still some work to do to be sure that the staff gets looped back into the response. Uh, so it's not just a matter of pushing a button. You have to feed the data in and then get the data out again. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect that we would be prepared to uh, to really launch that before the full adoption of the asset management plan, which is expected now in December. I guess um, one of the things that that interests me is that we do have a um, is it a provincial regulation or a provincial mandate that we. Um, put into place a complaint tracking monitoring system. That's correct. Uh, have we met that requirement? Yes, we have a complaint monitoring uh, policy in place, yeah. We have a policy in place, but not a system. We have both now. The uh, City Works module is, is a tracking system, and it can produce reports. But we don't want to be producing reports that may not be fully accurate because we haven't fully understood the mapping. Um, I, you know, I mean, I understand council's interest in this matter, and I encourage it. But we want to make sure we've got a good, robust system before we really launch it. Go ahead. So, my understanding of, of Mr. Baptista's system is exactly this. This point is that um, when you're doing your input, it learns his the new system learns from the input that you you go through that task. That you go through and that's the hard part about it but once that task is completed it uses its AI like the artificial intelligence as to the way that you've done that in the past mm -hmm. and it automatically does that for you mm -hmm. does the system we have presently now have the ability to do that as well or do you have to do data input every single time uh, no it does it does remember some of the data that's been put in so you can track if you're getting a same complaint from the same area over and over again, or from the same person over and over and over again, the the uh, you know I mean I think if 
if council wants to have a good fulsome discussion on, on this kind of system, I think it's important that we do that. Um, but maybe not as a result of a review of minutes. Maybe the, the appropriate time to do that is to put it on the agenda yeah. for a discussion. Yeah. Um, could we do that then? Mm -hmm. uh, would the clerk or the deputy clerk make a note, bring that forward at the next and then finance committee meeting and we'll take another look at it. Uh, so the the uh, motion on the floor at the present time is to receive and approve the minutes of that committee meeting of July the 15th. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And so now I'm at item number item number eight on the agenda, which is action and information items coming forward from the committees. Item 8A is the application for a severance from Granger. Councillor Hunter. Move myself, second by Deputy Mayor Desam, but the municipal councillor recommends in favor of severance B3519 Granger as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. It's been through the committee. Lots of discussion at the committee. Questions, if any? I, Hearing I, none. No, I'm sorry, I, I just have one. Um, I'm, I'm going by the colored picture that, that is uh, attached uh, to the, it looks like a photograph. It just appears that the way it's um, either drawn on there or shown on there, it almost looks like it um, actually juts out on both County Road 44 and Totem Ranch Road. Is, is there sufficient setback from the roadway? Um, it, it fronts on both of It does, roads. yes. <coughs> and, and, you know, by the, by the red line here, it looks like it's halfway across Totem Ranch Road, and then it looks... Oh, well, that's just a, Is that just, yeah. is that just a drawing, or, yeah. or okay? The, the more detailed drawing is the, is the one yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, it, okay. That's so it's just frontage on both roads, yes, right? Yeah. Right. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, call, if there are no question, no further questions, I'm calling the question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. No, so this is a recommending, recommends in favor, so just uh, yes. going to item 8B on the agenda, severance application Barton, Deputy Mayor Deshaun. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council recommends in favor of severance B-39-19 and B-40-19 Barton. With the condition that environmental impact assessment be completed that demonstrates to the satisfaction of the township that there will be no negative impacts on the natural features or the ecological functions for the area, as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick question to staff. Is, uh, is uh, Barton aware that he's going to be required to get an environmental impact assessment? Yes, he is. He is, okay. Dis further discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion? Aye. Motion is carried. And now on to 8C, which is severance application for Adams, which is the lady that's here with us this evening. Councillor Dillava, I believe you have that? Moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Cameron. The principal council recommends in favor of severance B-41-19 Adams as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Discussion of any? Hearing none, I vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. So Ms. Adams, you have your severance approval by this body, but we just recommend to the County Severance uh, uh, Land Division Committee, or the, actually now called the County Planning Committee, we recommend we make a recommendation, they make the final decision. I think you're aware of that? Okay. So thank you very much for coming and showing your interest. Thank you. Item 8D. Uh, OCIF formula based grant, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamp that the Municipal Council directs the Treasurer to set up a reserve fund account for the receipt of 
OCIF formula-based funding to be used on future eligible capital projects that are approved by Council as recommended by the Committee of the Whole, Administration and Finance. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. <coughs> Have we seen the dollars yet? No. Item 8E, request for a load closure and conveyance, Ventner, Councillor Hunter. Move myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the Municipal Council agree to close and convey that portion of Catherine Street between lots 7 and 8, plan 15, and convey it to the owners of 1530 and 1526 Ventner Road. This closure and conveyance is on condition on one, the ownership of lots 5, 6, and 7 be vested in the same name, and two, adoption of a deeming bylaw by the Township of Edgeburg Garden to merge the parcel within Plan 15, and three, the owner merging the triangular parcel identified with, with PIN 38139-0571LT with the rest of the farm identified as PIN 68139-0372, recommended by the Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And item number 8F, disposal of surplus goods, a truck. Deputy Mayor Dacia. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council declare the Environmental Services 2004 GMC Sierra 4x4 pickup truck and the Recreation 2004 GMC Sierra pickup truck as surplus to the needs of the Township and authorize staff to dispose of the items in the most effective manner, as recommended by the Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Discussion if any. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And item number 8, G, the Greater Report Follow-up, Councillor Hunter. And myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the Municipal Council maintain two motorized graders in the municipal fleet until at least 85% of the municipal road network is paved as recommended by Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. Thank you very much. Motion is on the floor. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And item number 8H, Rail Safety Week Proclamation, Deputy Mayor Desha. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. Whereas, Rail Safety Week is to be held across Canada from September 23rd to the 29th, 2019, and whereas it is in the public's interest to raise citizens' awareness of the dangers of ignoring safety warnings at level crossings and trespassings on rail property, to reduce avoidable deaths, injuries, and damages caused by incidents involving trains and citizens, and whereas Operation Lifesaver is a public-private partnership whose aim is to work with the public, rail industry, governments, police services, media, and others to raise rail safety awareness. And whereas CN has requested Council to adopt this resolution in support of its ongoing efforts to save lives and prevent injuries in communities, including our own municipality. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal does hereby, hereby Proclaim September 23rd to the 29th, 2019 as Rail Safety Week within the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Discussion, if any. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And item number nine on the agenda is approval of the correspondence package. Councillor Cameron. Yes, it's moved by myself and seconded by. Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that Municipal Council receives the correspondence listing for the following dates as previously circulated. June 27th, 2019, July 3rd, 2019, July 11th, 2019, July 18th, 2019. Thank you very much. Discussion, if any? 
Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. And on to item number 10, which is approval of the disbursement sheets. Councillor Gillibon. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Cameron, that the Municipal Council approves the payment municipal invoice circulated and dated as follows. Reported date June 3rd, 2019, $309,194.76. Reported date July 4th, 2019, $40,804.14. Reported date July 19th, 2019, $50,640.93. Reported dated July 19th, 2019, $638,150.89. Reported dated July 19th, 2019, $7,234.84. Total $1,046,028.56. Motion, please. Thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Discussion, if any. Councillor Hunter. I have one question on your service equipment. No. Page? Page 2 of Scotch, uh, July 19th. Okay, go ahead. July 19th? Yeah. Page 2. Page 2. Page 2. Page two. What's the number? What is it, 31? Oh, 94, page 2. That's 94, page 2, got that, and then what's the... Check? Service equipment, where is that? Uh, Service equipment, I got it. Peterville. Yeah. Peterville now? Yeah, service equipment is Peterville, out in 730 Dorksop. Yeah. Stop. yeah. Which one is that? I can't find it on my... Uh, so, it's uh, batch 2019-00094. There's no page reference other than it's page 2 of the batch. Printed on uh, report dated 719. You find it yet? Oh, it's no, it starts with the same. Sorry, service. Well, C-E-R-V-U-S equipment. Yeah, yeah. C-E-R-V-U-S. Yeah, okay. Mudflaps mean it's T-Sub. Yeah. Have you got the page number? You got the page, Councillor. First check at 31. Yeah, that's page 2. Yeah, that's the first vendor, first invoice at the top of the page is 31679. What is it by our stat date? On the computer. Uh, 101. 101, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's 102 online. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now, let me just think where I am. Do I have the motion? Yes, I have the motion have in front of me. Questions. I haven't called the question. Uh, yes, I'm asking four questions. Councillor Cameron. Yes, uh, I'm, um, I think the treasurer can answer this quite uh, quite simply. I'm just curious. Um, on page three of the first, the very first batch that, uh, that we've got there, which is uh, 2019-0079, um, and it's the list of accounts as of uh, three uh, six o three. Uh, 2019, which is the third of, I'm reading that as the third of June. Um, I'm just curious as to why these are brought forward at this meeting instead of the, the June meeting. Um, through the chair, uh, the uh, these are pre-authorized uh, debit. Um, they pull from our bank account for for these, uh, so there's no checks associated with these. And this particular batch uh, was missed in the June uh, council meeting. So okay. just so that council was aware that this, these uh, payments were withdrawn in June, uh, I made sure that they were brought forward in this, in this batch. Okay. Um, and, and I have another question, and, and it's regarding the uh, uh, Rito St. Lawrence billing for uh, the Card Marina, both on, that, on page three of the, the batch that I was referring to. 
and also on the next batch, which is page two of uh, batch uh, 2019 um, We're looking at 14, between 14 and 15 thousand dollars per month uh, on these, and I know there's no ice or there hasn't been any ice. Uh, I'm just somewhat curious as to why the hydro is, is so high. Uh, through the chair, it's not just hydro, it also is water, and the arena is set at a uh, commercial rated water uh, on a monthly basis, so it's part of it is water as well. Okay, okay, um, this okay. So, are there any further questions with the disbursement chief, Councillor Dillabaugh? I know staff, you guys are getting tired of hearing this. It's principal arena, uh, actually, Cancer Cameron, there's, it, it's still high to me too, the arena, but Spencer Arena, it also has, it has nothing there, no lights on, no nothing, we, and we paid it uh, $6,822 and $2,405. Like nine thousand dollars, and there's nothing there. I mean, it's closed. Uh, but now you may be getting a lag in the yeah, billing. In the billing. So what? Uh, what page are you looking at? Um, page. Uh, here what, we go. What batch page number? two, sorry. Um, batch twenty nineteen zero 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 seven nine. Yes, page okay. two ninety four in our. Yeah, and so you're looking at the Spencerville Arena. If I go down the invoice numbers, is it one nine eight seven six four nineteen? Yes. And then uh, zero two five nine five four 19. dash nineteen. Yes. Okay. So the key may very well be in the dates or the the, uh, the, the 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 period that's covered by that invoice, even though it's showing up on our June. Yeah. That's a June disbursement sheet. Oh yes, that's the one that you said is an automatic deduction. Why do we do automatic deductions for hydro? That's another question. Um, well, a lot of our Bell and Hydro, um, those utilities are, are actually withdrawn. It's easier as a pre-authorized as opposed to, uh, to cutting checks uh, for all of those accounts. So they come out of the bank on a regular basis. I still didn't get my question. $9,227 in one month, and you're saying it's catch-up? Well, I'm saying, I don't know what the period is. Else? Without having, if I may, Mr. Mayor, without having the bill in front of me, uh, my guess is that the Spencerville Arena has iced in through to the end of March, or pretty close to the end of March. This bill looks to have been dated April 19th. April 19th. I suspect that they're 30 days behind in the billing. Yeah. I would imagine this would be for the last month of operation. But, again, we can can we do that and get back to you. Yep. Or you can stop in and they can see the end, you can see the actual millings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any more questions about the disbursement sheet? Hearing none, I'm about to call a question on the disbursement sheet. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion is carried. I might, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I might make one comment on that automatic billing. That was set up in the last term of council I was on to avoid, avoid when we were paying it by check. We were incurring interest charges all the time because when we switch to just paying month to month, our payment schedule doesn't fall when the hydro payment we do. So Richard Bennett changed it all the time there because it was costing us two or three hundred dollars a month in interest charges on all our hydro bills and stuff being delayed not paid on time. And just to further Councillor Hunter's explanation, at one time Council met and approved this first one sheets twice a month. But when we went to once a month approvals, then the sequence of, uh, of um, billing cycles didn't work. So we did save interest costs quite a bit. Um, where am I? I must be here someplace. <laughs> Item number 11 on the agenda. 11A, Site Plan Control Agreement for h and Petroleum. Deputy Mayor Deshaun. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to authorize, a, authorize amendment 
to the site plan control agreement registered as instrument PR95926 as authorized by bylaw 1988-34 HD Petroleum and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Very good. First and second <coughs> reading. Any questions? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Unanimous approval can proceed to third reading. <coughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that a bylaw to authorize amendment to the site plan control agreement registered as instrument PR95926 as authorized by bylaw 1988-34 HD Petroleum be now read a third time and finally passed signed sealed and numbered 2019-39 questions if any hearing none those in favor of third reading I motion is carried thank you <coughs> And item number 11B, Emergency Management Bylaw, Councillor Dillawa. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cameron that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to provide for the establishment and adoption of an emergency management program for the Township of Riversburg Cardinal. And this shall constitute first, second reading thereof. Thank you very much. First and second reading for the emergency management program. Question, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried unanimously. We can proceed to third reading. <coughs> Councillor Dillbaugh. Got the move by myself, second by Councillor Cameron. The bylaw provided for establishing and adoption of emergency management program in Township of Irvington Cardinal. Now be read the third time and finally pass, signed, sealed, and numbered 2019 40. Thank you very much. Those in favor, please signify. Aye. Motion is carried. And item number 11C, the Memorandum of Understanding for South Nation Conservation, the Berm. Councillor Hunter. Move by myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to enter into a Memorandum of Understanding with South Nation River Conservation Authority to establish a partnership to complete flood mitigation measures, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Thank you very much, Councillor Hunter. Those in favor of first and second reading? Aye. Motion is carried unanimously and can proceed to third reading. Move myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Dishap, that the bylaw to enter into a memorandum of understanding to establish a partnership with South Nation River Conservation Authority to complete flood mitigation measures be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2019 41. Thank you very much. Call third reading. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Now, before we proceed to the next bylaw, I'm just going to interject a few words here. So, this bylaw that we've just passed gives us access to what is called mitigation financing. And the Conservation Authority has access to dollars to mitigate flood damage and, and to establish flood control. And we're very early into that program by getting this money and we will be actually getting our work done prior to the 2020 spring season. And I'm pointing that out because it is of no small interest to the Lake Ontario St. Lawrence River Control Board and the IJC that conservation authorities have the mandate to respond to flood problems and they have access to federal money to do so. So I'm just drawing that to your attention because we are going to hear a lot more about that in the next uh, probably within the next three months. So moving on, I'm at item number 11D, Ontario Power Generation License Agreement, Councillor Dillabaugh. 
Moved by myself, second by Councillor Cameron, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to enter into a license agreement with the Ontario Power Generation Inc. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Thank you very much. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? First and second reading, carried unanimously. Can proceed to third reading, Councillor. Moved by myself, second by Council Cameron, that the bylaw to enter into a license agreement with Ontario Power Generation Inc. be now read third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2019-42. Thank you very much. Those in favor of third reading, please signify. Motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> and on to item number 11E, the Port Assignment of Lease Agreement. Councillor Hunter. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Clerk to execute an assignment and consent to assignment of a lease agreement for Port Property Number P29, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Thank you very much. Questions, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm on to item number 12, which is a Third reading. Sorry? Third reading. Third reading. Sorry. We have myself second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps by the bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the assignment and con consent to assignment of the lease. Agreement for port property number P29 be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, number 2019-43. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Sorry about that. Now I can go on to item number 12, which is the CAO's administrative update. And I get the CAO to highlight the report and then we'll have the motion. Uh, to receive the report, uh, Councillor Cameron, I believe you've got it. I'll just ask you to hold it for a minute. I will. CAO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple of things I guess I would like to note that aren't in the upcoming meeting schedule but are scheduled. One is the cybersecurity training, uh, which is open to all members of councils and staff, uh, and the librarians. And perhaps Councillor Cameron would carry that message to the library board. I will. Um, I think anyone who has access to a computer probably should take advantage of this training. It will give you a really good overview on how to spot um, a scam and how to spot an email that may not be from the source it looks like. So where's the training? Here, at the township office. Is it on the report? No. It, well, it's on, it's on that we're having it. I just didn't have the date mailed down until yeah, no? September 30th. Oh, it's September 30th? So there'll be two sessions offered, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and you can choose either one or the other. Yes. If the yeah. trainer is coming to us from Onser, and uh, and it's the same price no matter how many people we train, so we may as well get as many as we can. So can the can you send us a, a something that we can respond to? I believe we did that already. Yes, yes. So you did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. But the date wasn't on. Uh, I, I think, think it was. was. Maybe I think it was. I, yes. Yes. Wait, wait. Nine to eleven. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. It's on a Monday, yeah. right? We can resend it. Gosh, I don't remember seeing it. <laughs> um, Unbelievable. Please send it to me. I will do that. A reminder that we are only having one committee at the whole meeting in August. It'll be on the twelfth. Uh, the senior management team, large parts of them at least, spent the day today with um, citywide. Uh, reviewing our life cycle management strategy and uh, the next step in getting our new asset management plan in place. Um, we did uh, we did have a little hiccup in the in the <laughs> aquatics in that our aquatics coordinator got a job that she very much wanted so we're very happy for her. Uh, but it does mean we'll be down to a part-time aquatics coordinator for the remainder of the summer. Um, getting ready to pave. As you know, Weir Road will be closed tomorrow for culvert replacement. 
Uh, kind of jumped the gun on the ICIF Northern and Rural Stream application. We got notification that we were successful and then realized that that was not actually us, that was the county. That was pretty slippery. <laughs> it was. So just ignore that comment. We did not get funding for our Rooney Road project. It sure looked like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you very much. When, 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 you, when can we start? <laughs> Should have let the tender immediately, right? Wait, you said it's the notice. We have been non direct uh, direct water in Cardinal while they're getting some work done at the water tower. But I believe from talking to Gord and Eric this morning, everything is going along swimmingly and they expect to be back online tomorrow. tomorrow. So that, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we will have some some new work to be done on the municipal drains. Some of the work that Robinson Consultants has been undertaking is coming forward in the next month or two. Um, Don't have dates yet, do you? We expect to have something for the 12th on, uh, on the Scutton Branch Drain, August 12th committee meeting and then council on the 26th. We have to have some public meetings with respect to uh, assessment schedules. So as soon as Robinson gives us their availability, we will schedule those. Nothing on the new, no date for Newport. <laughs> no, but the, the fact that they reached out to us and asked if they could change the name gave us hope that they must be getting close. <laughs> no, we do have a draft map, so. Oh, do we? Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to mention. Now, around the table, are there any questions for the CAO, Councillor Hunter? CAO. Deputy Mayor? No. Nope. Councillor Cameron? Just, uh, just a couple of, of quick ones. Um, I sent an email earlier today regarding Walker Street. Right. And I now, I, didn't ch I haven't checked this afternoon to see if there was an answer, but... Yeah. Uh, I was asked Dave to jump in here. I know there were some uh, last things that had to be done on the Walker Street project, and I didn't have an update for Councillor Cameron when he emailed today. Okay. So, so through through the uh, through the chair, uh, yes, sir. There are a couple deficiencies, and, and one of that is the uh, the hydro seeding that was done. Uh, what we're what we're trying to do is get residents to actually cut the grass. There are some that have let the weeds uh, continue to grow. And that's not, and that's not going to resolve the issue. Uh, I, I'm, what we're finding is at at the start, uh, those that have been cutting and maintaining the grass, or what was a bulk of weeds, it, it, the grass is now uh, starting to to come up through. But we're still waiting uh, on word back from the contractor of what the next steps are with respect to that, whether okay. there'll be a, a reseeding um, or, or not. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and the other question I have is just regarding the Johnstown survey uh, survey letters uh, are flowing in through mail, website, and in person. And uh, is there a is there a trend? Uh, yes, the trend is uh, far more people are saying no, thank you, than yes, please. So we'll have a full report in August. Thank you. That's all I uh, that's all I have, uh, Mr. Councilor Dilma. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, so I have a question on page three of four. And on page three of four, uh, just coming down in the first block from the top, the fourth item says storm water management. The storm water drainage system for the ingredient center, parking area, and grounds is being reviewed by Greer Galloway for improvement. Now, I think this may relate to the gentleman in that neighborhood that keeps calling me about the fact that is that the that the holding pond doesn't drain quick enough. Is that am I correct in that? In the chair, that is correct. Ah, I'm glad to see that it's being addressed. But my question is this: if it's being addressed, and if we're going to be doing some work in there anyway, is there any way of tightening that drain up a little bit tighter? and building up the area on the west side of the drive
to create parking on the west side of the drive. There's a lot of area in there that's grassed over that really could be converted to parking, another 15 parking spaces which are desperately needed at the ingredient center. So when they're reviewing it, can they not review it with a view to, in addition to solving the drainage problem, addressing the parking problem as well? So through the chair, uh, part, part of that is uh, to, to improve the, the, the drainage that's there now and uh, to, to look to see what can be incorporated into to additional parking spots. So I, I do not know at this, at this stage. Okay, but that's part of the mandate? That, 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 that is part of the review. Part of the review, okay. I appreciate that, thank you very much. Are there any other questions for the CAO's report? If not, I'm gonna ask Councillor Cameron to bring the motion forward. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, it's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps that Municipal Council receives the CAO's administrative report as presented. Thank you very much. We've had the discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. So I'm on to item number 14 on the agenda, which is the Mayor's report. Should be uh, 13, Mr. Mayor. Miss 13, I did, which is uh, council inquiries or notices of motion. Has anyone got anything to bring forward under council inquiries or notices of motion? Nobody does. Yes. Councilor Hunter. You have to have one inquiry uh, brought up about the parking restrictions on South Street. There, we got any feedback? On uh, through, through, through the chair, it's, it's being looked at. Uh, on, uh, well, un unfortunately, I won't have a, re a report or a recommendation for the for the August 12th meeting uh, because, fortunately, I'm on holidays for a couple weeks, so I, I, I won't have time. Is that fortunately uh, or unfortunately? <laughs> uh, fortunately for me, maybe unfortunately with respect to the report, but we we will we will have something uh, uh, t together. Uh, for the uh, for the following meeting. The reason, uh, Chair, the reason I inquire is uh, expense for fair is coming up, and that was one of the main complaints that we had. That's on Third Street, Garden Street, I guess it is, and Second Street back. Uh, we get this name there that they get parking on both sides of that, and you can't get up and down even one little street during expense for fair weekend. A lot of the residents are really hoping we have something limited on that for fair day. So, so, through, so through the chair, just to, to clarify, uh, is the, are, are you looking at um, permanent parking restrictions or event parking restrictions? I'm looking at permanent parking okay. restrictions. Okay. But we can, if we're being delayed that we can't get something done before Fair day. Is there any way we could have at least a temporary parking restriction or some notices or something put up for fair day that they don't park? In? So, so I'll go back to you. If, if we have a mechanism that we can limit parking to one side yeah. uh, during the fair weekend, will you be satisfied with that? Well, for now, uh, for I'd now? really like to see it dealt with that. Dealt okay. with permanent, but if I know restrictions and time bylaws and stuff down if we have some way we can okay, so a temporary restriction on it. So to the CAO, do we have a do we have sufficient uh, power to be able to declare one sided parking during the fair weekend on South Street? West side only I think is what we were looking at. <coughs> West yeah. side? West or east doesn't matter one side or the other. I mean I think we can certainly put up barricades and sign it. Whether or not we can actually enforce it and issue tickets I don't think so. <laughs> I think it, it requires a bylaw in order to issue tickets. But certainly, as a courtesy, we can ask people not to park there. Okay, so we could put up the uh, barricades parallel to the shoulder of the road, which would at least discourage people from going against the barricades. And uh, if I may, just my recent experience at Kempville Live, they they put the you know the big traffic cones, the black and red striped traffic cones, 
right. across the law, along the whole uh, shoulder of the road where they don't want parking to take place, it seems very effective. So do we have authority to do that for your fair weekend? Oh, sure. Okay, well I think we have, cons yeah. do we have consensus that that be done? Absolutely. I think so, yeah. 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 yeah, so I think we have consensus sure. that that be done. Okay, I'm still at Councillor Inquiries Notices of Motion. Um, just, uh, may, may I just ask a question to pick up on uh, just an item that uh, Madam CIO said. We can't issue tickets for parking. Because we don't Until have we a have bylaw. a bylaw. We have to have the bylaw in place in order to issue. Okay, so is that, um, now, is, is there a bylaw in other areas of, uh, of, of the township? Yeah, basic, we yes, basically anywhere that you though. see signs, we can enforce, but until you pass the bylaw and authorize the signage to go up, we can't. So you can only enforce where your bylaw says you're going to enforce. Okay, thank you. So somebody, was it uh, you? Or was it, Oh. Inquire, I don't know where we should do it here under the mayor's report, but we're still looking for our no parking along in front of our auction house up there that we haven't heard nothing from. That's right, and it's not on the agenda for this week either. The meeting is on Thursday. I was I had firm assurances from the council from the director that he would have a report before council county council. Uh, I thought it would be at this July 25th meeting, but it looks like it's going to slip to the, actually now, the September meeting, which will be the first Tuesday or the, Tuesday of the first full week in September. Looks like that's when you'll get the, we'll get that report. So it's been dragging on ever since this council come in here and, and hopefully we're going to have signed up there before we get into winter works thing that they start parking because that's a real problem. It's, yeah. Comes, so. And I see that the uh, owner of the property is in fact increasing his parking area uh, and there are efforts being made not to have his customers not park on the north side but they're not all that effective. Well he's doing his part I think he announces it at every auction I understand uh, right. not park there but it's not very well here to so. No. No, did you have something? No. Anybody else? Anything? No? Okay, so now I can go on to item number 14. And luckily we cancelled item number 16 on the agenda so my report can be lengthy this evening. 45 minutes, I think. Four or five. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the or. Yeah. Um, just a, a notice to council. I have a request from the Toronto People with AIDS Foundation who are supporting the Friends for Life bike rally. And that bike rally will leave Toronto on August the 11, 200 cyclists, 100 crew members, and with a goal to raise $1.4 million for AIDS survivors. Now they'll be coming to Grenville Park Campground on the afternoon, arriving in the afternoon of Wednesday, August the 14th. They've asked me as the mayor of the township if I would bring greetings and presentation, which I'll do and uh, Rebecca is creating a little scroll for me to present. I'm inviting other members of council to be there. The lady that's organizing it tells me if I can be there at 6, the presentation will be just at the time that they make their announcements. They, it appears they all sit down for dinner together at the same time at about 5.15 or so until 6, and then they have their announcements between 6 and 6.30. So that's when she wants me to present the scroll. Now my particular goal is to be able to present them with a scroll, welcoming them, welcoming them through the township and presenting them with 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 dollars, roughly. So anybody that would like to attend, I've got an empty envelope. Okay. So it's going to cost us 20 dollars to attend. The I didn't say that. <laughs> it sounded like it. <laughs> Wednesday, August the 14th, between 6 and 6.30, Grenville Park, Brown. All right, okay. going on, uh, the Ontario Job Site Challenge. So. I just want to say a little bit about that. 
because as you know, uh, CAO and I uh, attended at a meeting in Toronto on July the 2nd, and it was rather discouraging, but I've, ne I've since then uh, had a couple of discussions with our MPP and our MPP's office, and I've done a little bit of spade work on my own, and I intend to pursue this Ontario job site challenge in a little bit different way. I'm making council aware of that. I'll be having a meeting uh, uh, later this week once I've got my last little bit of information in order. And uh, depending on how the meeting goes, I'll bring you a follow-up report in September. Uh, next item on the agenda is calling your attention to the Rideau St. Lawrence Annual General Meeting which this year will be held at the Port of Johnstown meeting room at 11 a.m. on Friday, August the 16th. Just a reminder that the township owns 11.92% ownership of the common shares of Rideau St. Lawrence, which pays us a dividend this year of $19,000. And in addition to that, we've issued a promissory note to the organization which pays us interest of 3.72% and uh, we'll get a check of, for 2018 of about $8,370 as interest on our promissory note. The and date then, on that again, Mr. Mayor? Beg pardon? The date on that again? Yes, so the date is Friday, August the 16th. It's important that you let them know that you're going to attend. You can let me know and I'll let them know. And by the way, the meeting is at 11, goes to about 12, 31 o'clock, and then lunch is courtesy of Rito St. Lawrence at the Bridgeview restaurant. And last item, just a reminder that the joint meeting of all three councils will take place on Thursday, July the 30th at 6.30 p.m. And we did confirm today that uh, Tony Fleming uh, the lawyer that you met during the orientation in Brockville will be the facilitator or the chair for that meeting. And uh, so July the 30th, big day for municipal modernization discussion. So that's the mayor's report and I'm looking to Deputy Mayor Desha. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that municipal council receives the mayor's report as presented. Thank you very much. Those in favor, please signify. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And I'm moving on then to item number 16 is off the agenda. Item number 17 is the confirmatory bylaw. And Councillor Dillaby, I believe you have that. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Cameron, that the bylaw to adopt, confirm, ratify matters dealt with by the resolution be now passed, signed, sealed, number 2019 44. Those in favor of the confirmatory bylaw? Aye. Motion is carried, thank you. And the chair is looking for the motion to adjourn. Deputy Mayor Dacia. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. The Municipal Council does now adjourn at 7.55 p.m. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye.